Hi there, my name is Chantelle. I am from the Research Centre for Ecosystem Resilience with the Botanic Gardens, Sydney. Um, we're in the Blue Mountains. We are going to show you how we take samples for genetic analysis. So this is mostly for conservation genetics, looking at things like inbreeding, gene flow, uh, provenance boundaries of species, and that can be used to inform whether or not it is a species, whether or not the population is inbred, needs augmentation, and other genetic rescue planning. The types of samples we're going to be collecting today are for SNPs, so single nucleotide polymorphisms. If you are doing a whole genome sequencing, the method that you'd use is slightly different. The species we were looking for on this field trip is called Haloragodendron gibsonii. Because it's protected, I can't show you exactly where it was, but this is it right here. I will also note we have permits in place to collect this material. Mira is going to explain. So this is a preparation of leaf material for genetic analysis. So we're going to take some fresh leaf material. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that uh, we remember which plant this is from and where we've collected it. So we're going to write the information on the collections. Uh, we're going to write the location. Collectors. Uh, then we're also going to write uh, the date, which is the 19th. Of uh, the okay, cool. And then we're going to... This number here, this is our ID number. So this collection is going to have an ID number that's linked to it. And that is going to be linked to our database. Uh, and we're going to collect some leaf material. So we're going to check for the freshest leaves that we can. Uh, and we're just going to make sure we're not damaging the plant at the same time. The general rule is to collect around a fingernail size as the minimum quantity but it's always better to collect extra if possible. That will give options for additional sequencing if required. Collecting young leaves is important as the DNA is the highest quality and also the plants have less likely developed defensive compounds that can interfere with any extraction. Diseased or damaged leaves can yield poor quality DNA. Although including non-plant specimens like bacteria are going to be detected and discarded. So don't worry too much about that. Once collected, we then database the specimen in a dedicated app, which links the barcode with a species and location coordinates. We can also add details about the site, including soil, aspect, associated species, and also about the plant and any population demographics, such as quantity that are reproductive, how many juveniles, and number of plants in a 10 metre radius, which gives an idea of density. Once collected, specimens need to be kept cool. Into a plastic bag uh, that is in a cool bag, like a lunchbox like we got here, that has some like that and just already got some ice in here just keeping it nice and cool uh, until we get back and put it into the negative 80 freezer. If collecting from a very small plant like this one take the minimum number of samples possible or perhaps decide that it cannot tolerate damage. In this case we are taking slightly older leaves as we felt that the stem with the juvenile leaves on top was too fragile and could be damaged. We also collect as standard a voucher specimen to confirm identification with the herbarium taxonomists. And in this case, we are taking a larger sample to press and include as part of the permanent herbarium collection because this species hasn't yet been documented in this location. When collecting voucher material, you need to make sure that it has as much reproductive material as possible, so flowers and fruits. You should also include different types of leaves, including juvenile and adult, if they're different, and also the stem material. For some species, for example, ferns, you may also need to include the base of the stem or roots and tubers. We also barcode these vouchers and include them in the app records. 
So for this collection, there will be a specimen and a vouchered collection. Both have unique barcodes, but are unified in the location notes and also the coordinates. It's important to process your samples as quickly as possible. In this case, we had a long field day where the vouchers were kept in the envelope and the leaf material kept in the esky. But in the evening, we made sure that we pressed our vouchers. Pressing specimens can occur between two pieces of cardboard and within that two pieces of newspaper to absorb any moisture. When you're pressing your specimen, you need to make sure that you have leaves facing both up and downwards and any of the reproductive material present and visible because once this specimen gets mounted, as in fixed to the uh, board, it won't be removed again. So you need to have all of the characteristics visible. After that, the next piece of newspaper goes on and then it can be either stored uh, for the short term using a rubber band or we put it in a press. Samples are then transferred to a drying oven set at 35 degrees and once dry, sent to the herbarium along with the metadata that was captured on the app as well as the collection envelope. Material for genetics can be stored for a few days in a normal refrigerator, but not frozen. If you can't keep samples cool in the field, or it's going to be longer than a few days before you can transfer them to a minus 80 freezer, samples can be stored in silica. Samples should never be in contact with the silica, and it shouldn't become a default to use it, as silica may actually interfere with the DNA extraction process and the library process, so it can affect the quality of the samples. Once back in the laboratory, we transfer the samples to a minus 80 freezer, followed by a freeze dryer. After freeze drying, samples are broken down further and put into Eppendorf tubes using sterilised tweezers. We clean and sterilise the tweezers to remove any other plant material. However, don't worry too much about mammal DNA in these samples. It will get picked up and removed like bacterial DNA, as mentioned before. Samples are put into plates of 96 and then sent to the Diversity Array Technologies facility in Canberra for DNA extraction. As part of record keeping, the unique location position of the sample in the tray, in this case A1, is recorded on both the Eppendorf tube and the original collection envelope. This is then linked with the unique barcode assigned to that sample. Extra samples are retained in-house for re-extraction or re-analysis if required. As well, all of the metadata on the envelopes is retained. If you were doing whole genome sequencing, the methods would be very similar, except you would need to be putting samples into dry ice or liquid nitrogen as quickly as possible. We hope you found this content useful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the RESA team at the Botanic Gardens, Sydney. In 2022, the team also published a workflow for conservation genomics, which is open access.